So chapter 35, we're going to go through some of the different uh, structures of the plant. And we're going to start with the main basic organs. And plants have typically three organs, the roots, stems, and leaves. And these reflect the evolution of plants on land. So they are getting their oxygen, they are getting their CO2 and sun from above the ground, and then they also need to get uh, water and other nutrients from below the ground. So they grow up and they grow down. And we break these into two different systems. The shoot system has the stems and the leaves, and then the root system is made up of the root. Stems and leaves can both be green and photosynthetic, but a root system is never going to have chlorophyll. It's never going to be photosynthetic because it's meant to grow underground. So let's start from the bottom and work our way up. So talking about roots, some of the main functions of roots are going to be to anchor the plant into the soil, to help absorb water and other nutrients like phosphates, nitrogen. Um, they also can help store uh, products that the plant made during photosynthesis. So things like carbohydrates, um, water, other resources that the plant wants to hold on to for later, it can store in its roots. The primary root, so here you can see a seed, and the very first thing that grows when a seed germinates is the primary root, or it's also called the radical. Because the very first thing that that plant seedling wants to do is start pulling in some water. And you can see on here, we've got little root hairs that are pulling off. Um, so root hairs are extensions of the epidermis. That's the outer layer. So like on you, your epidermis is your skin. Um, those root hairs actually account for the vast majority of water absorption because they create such a massive surface area for absorption, even though they're really, really tiny and they're only coming off of like the outer surface of the root. There are typically two different types of root systems. So if the radical root remains and becomes enlarged, that's called a tap root. This is common in uh, dicot plants. So for example, a tap root would be something like a carrot where the main root is swollen. It's used for storing carbohydrates. It's energetically expensive to do that because you're putting a lot of resources into one root and you're not maximizing your absorption but it helps to stabilize taller plants because it's going to prevent them from falling over. Another type of root system is the fibrous root system. This is common in monocot systems. And that main root actually disappears, so there's no main root here. Instead, the lateral branching roots take over and it creates kind of a knot of roots. So if you look at like a palm tree or grasses, you're going to see something more like this. Um, this is commonly helps erosion of the soil, so this is going to keep the soil in place, make sure that that plant still has soil to be absorbing nutrients from. There are a lot of different specialty type roots that we see that kind of break these two molds, so let's go through a few of those. Um, prop roots, you can see here. These are adventitious, which means they're emerging from the stem, they're taking advantage. Um, and these are actually, you're going to see some part of these be above the soil. And they're going to help to support tall, heavy, top, um, top heavy plants. Uh, another common function of roots is storage. So here you can see a little radish. Uh, this is common in things like carrots, uh, sweet potatoes, turnips, other types of storage roots. Um, and what these are doing is they're basically just holding on to starch. Uh, plants can have excess carbohydrates and they can just store them on their body um, underneath the ground because they don't have to worry about getting up and walking around. Another type of root are pneumatophores. So you might have seen these if you go to um, like a beach. This looks like a mangrove area. These are little roots that come up from the ground. These are common in areas that are extremely moist. So when the water is at low tide, that allows these roots to be um, ex exposed to air and that allows them to bring in oxygen. So plants still need oxygen to be able to do things like cellular respiration. 
Um, so that way they can do cellular respiration, they can make ATP in the cells in the roots. Another type of roots are buttress roots. So you can see these kind of growing sideways over here. Um, here's a man for height here. Uh, these are common in areas where the soil is really shallow, so the roots don't grow very deep underground, um, but that they're very moist. So this is going to help to support really tall trees in moist environments. And another type of root are called strangling roots. Aerial just means anything above the ground. So you can actually see there's a tree under here, and then there's these roots growing on top of it. So the plant with the strangling roots will actually form up here, and the roots will grow down, and they'll eventually shade out this plant. And so they'll completely strangle the plant underneath it and kill it and kind of take over its place and take over its um, sunlight. As we work our way up the plant, the next organ is the stem. So stems are going to function for holding on to the leaves. They're going to take the photosynthetic elements and elevate them up to where the light is. Stems can grow in uh, different directions to help the leaves bend towards the sun uh, in, in order to maximize photosynthesis. So these form an alternating system of nodes. So there'll be a node on one side, and then a node on the other side, and then a node on the other side. Sometimes these alternate left or right, sometimes they kind of whirl around the plant. And these are nodes are where the leaves are going to come off. Of. An inter node, so this is the space between. This prefix inter literally means between. So an inter node is here between those nodes. Here's another one here between those nodes internodes between the nodes. So at the nodes, we have leaves coming off. Um, plants grow from the very tip. So the very tip of the plant is what grows taller or, you know, the roots grow lower into the ground. So at the very tip, we have an apical bud, which is going to allow this plant to continue to grow tall. Next to these apical buds are two lateral buds. The lateral buds are going to allow for formations of things like branches, um, thorns, or flowers. Typically, if a plant has an active apical bud, the lateral buds near it will be dormant. The further you get away from the tip of the plant, the more likely you're going to get branches. So if you wanted to grow a tree that was really short and bushy, you would want to continue to make sure you cut off that top ap apical bud so that the lateral buds can become active. There are again a couple of kind of specialized stems that we see often. Um, so a rhizome is a stem that's underground. So this portion here is actually still the stem and it's got roots growing off of it, but this rhizome is going to allow the plant to propagate horizontally, um, as well as put down more roots and be more stable. Stolons, so stolons are these kind of horizontal shoots that grow out sideways above the ground. Um, sometimes they carry uh, asexual plantlets, so these are little plantlets, and the stolons are gonna carry those away from the main plant those plantlets have the opportunity to kind of branch off, put down their own roots, and become a cloned organism of the original plant. And then sometimes you can see more stolons here. Um, sometimes at the end of these stolons you can see tubers, so these are typical white potatoes. Um, so white potatoes are a stem and not a root. And the reason you can tell this, they have these enlarged eyes. So like the eye of the potato is actually an axillary bud, that's where um, you would be able to grow a stem or some roots from there. So this is why you can take a potato and you can actually plant it in the ground. As long as it has an eye, it can go ahead and grow because it can grow a stem and roots and then become a whole potato plant. And then our last plant main organ is the leaves. Uh, these are the main photosynthetic organ and these are going to receive light exchange gases, um, they dissipate heat for the plant, they are actually going to help defend the plant, so oftentimes the leaves will secrete things like um, toxins to defend against herbivores or pathogens. Uh, they're very compartmentalized, so if a leaf becomes uh, infected, it can actually drop off of the plant to preserve the rest of the plant from that infection. 
Typically, these are made of kind of a large flattened blade that necks down to a little stalk called a petiole. Um, so this is typical for dicot plants. You can see that these all have that branching venation, right? Even over here, those are branched. So those are both dicot plants. Uh, monocot plants have a blade, but they have parallel veins on them. And then there's no petiole. What happens is it branches down to a sheath and that sheath just surrounds the main stem. A leaf can be simple or compound. So a simple leaf is going to be one blade that has one petiole attached to the main branch or stem of the plant. These have the advantage of being kind of large, wide surfaces for photosynthesis. A compound leaf typically has these little leaflets that have um, little stalks to connect each other um, to the petiole, and then that branches down to the actual branch or axillary bud. Um, an advantage of these is they allow for um, shearing wind to get through without ca causing damage to the leaf. So wind can travel through here if it's very windy without causing damage to this plant. Um, it also allows for increased compartmentalization. So if one specific leaf gets infected with a pathogen, um, it can drop off and preserve the rest of the whole leaf. Just like all the other organs, leaves can have specialized functions. Um, so leaves can form tendrils. So this is actually a leaf of a vine. Um, so these are common on vines. They're going to reach out with these kind of curly looking tendrils to grasp onto other things to help provide support for the plant. One exception to this is grapevines. Grapevines are actually modified stems, not leaves. Um, another one is the cactus. So the spines on the cactus are the leaves. So on a cactus plant, the spines are not the photosynthetic organism. Instead, you've got this portion, which is the big fleshy portion, which is the stem. And that's what does photosynthesis for um, cactus plants. Leaves can also be used for storage. So you can see this kind of red onion here. Um, and you can see these little storage leaves. Those make up those layers. Um, and then this portion is actually part of the stem. And then you can see little roots down here. And then plantlets. So this is common on succulents uh, where you have these little plantlets form and that's going to allow for asexual reproduction. If you're a plant living in an environment that you're already well suited to, asexual reproduction doesn't take much energy. It's going to help you propagate into that area. Um, it doesn't increase genetic diversity, but if you're already well established, that's not such a big risk. Um, so plantlets are going to help, they're going to pop off, take root, and then allow for the growth of a potentially whole new plant.